Hi folks, it's David Kearns here with another With a Sharpie video. Uh, glad you could watch. Uh, today I wanted to start a few videos on the topic of carbon capture and storage. Um, this is something that's got a lot of attention uh, over the last 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Um, the idea being that we have a significant problem with uh, greenhouse gas emissions um, from our industrial economies around the world. And we're looking for solutions. We're looking for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that go into our atmosphere um, and have an effect on our climate. Um, carbon capture and storage has become something of a controversial topic. Um, some people view it as um, essentially a, a false way of dealing with the problem um, because essentially what we're trying to do is rather than reduce the amount of CO2 that we're making from our economies, uh, instead we capture them and bury them underground. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was just a brief introduction of what carbon capture and storage is um, and why we need it. Um, what the meanings of these words are as well. What does capture mean? What does storage mean? So let's, let's get into it. Um, so first off, let's have a look at uh, some of the situations that we find ourselves in today with um, greenhouse gas emissions. We have things like power stations. I'll draw a box here to represent a power station. PS for power station. Uh, power station um, does something that I think most of you would be pretty familiar with by now. Uh, it takes in a fuel of some kind, almost always a carbon containing fuel. So there's, so there's a carbon-based fuel. So it could be natural gas, it could be coal or, or something similar. Um, and it also takes in some air. And so you know that when you combust something, when you burn something, you need air. And what is air? Well, let's have a look. The typical breakdown of air, and this is not perfect, but if you were to take the moisture out of it and just look at everything else, it's approximately 78% um, nitrogen. Um, around 21% oxygen, and it's a roughly 1% uh, argon. Argon is a, what known as a noble gas. Uh, basically, it's inert. It doesn't really react with anything. And what do we get when we um, run our power station? Well, of course, we get some electricity, uh, which is, I guess, the, the predominant objective of all of this. So I'll just say we've got some electricity. Um, and out of all of this, we produce some flue gases. So what are flue gases? That's the exhaust, that's the, the combustion products. Now, this flue gas contains, among other things, CO2. So we now have a problem. We have some CO2 going off into the atmosphere, giving us problems with um, the greenhouse effect. And so there are other types of um, industrial operations out there that have this same problem. Um, you might say a cement plant, for example. Um, that produces something known as clinker. So clinker is basically the, the building blocks from which we, we grind it up and turn it into cement, which ultimately goes to make concrete, which is really important for our economy. Um, so we would call this a clinker plant. This is just an example. Um, but essentially what that does is it takes in a raw material known as limestone. Um, and we also add in some uh, fuel um, as a source of heat and of course some air goes in there as well and what do we get out of that we get some uh, clinker that's our product that we want which ultimately goes on to make cement which we can use to make concrete um, and again we produce a flue gas which contains co2 and you say well okay so what so what are we going to do about that well, the reason that I've given you two examples here is that traditional power stations that run on carbon-based fuels, we have emerging alternatives for those. We have things like um, renewable energy sources, so we can make electricity from um, solar energy, from the wind, from hydro. We don't have to produce electricity from this source alone. It's been a very cheap, very convenient, um, very effective way of making electricity, but it's not the only way. Unfortunately, for some of, the other some of the other parts of our economy, things like uh, making clinker to make cement, um, there's some basic chemistry here that makes CO2. So even if you were to replace this fuel here with um, a renewable fuel, like a biomass fuel, the limestone itself has a chemical reaction. It has a chemical formula of calcium carbonate, which is calcium and carbonate is CO3. And what happens is that that breaks down in a chemical reaction in this, um, in this clinker plant to make calcium oxide, which is clinker, 
and CO2. So even if you were to make this a perfectly renewable source of fuel, you would still have some CO2 in this flue gas. And so this is where we can start talking about carbon capture. What is carbon capture? So one thing to bear in mind is that when you run power stations or you run clinker plants or you run really any industrial plant that produces CO2, this CO2 does not come out in a pure form. It's not even close to pure. So I'll give you an example, say for a typical power station uh, that's burning coal, um, you might see, depending on exactly what type of coal it's burning and its composition and so on, you might see CO2 numbers uh, in the order of anywhere from maybe 10% at the low end up to maybe 20, 25% at the high end. Um, and so what's coming out of this flue is actually a minority of it is CO2. The majority of it is back here, this nitrogen and this argon, they went right through your power station and, and we, we had to take them in because they're mixed up with the oxygen from the air that we need. Um, but they go right through and they basically make up the bulk of that flue gas. They're just hot nitrogen and hot argon. Um, there's a little bit of unburnt, uh, uncombusted oxygen as well. Um, and, so, and of course we've got the CO2 and we've got traces of other things as well. Uh, but the main point that I want you to take away, and for clinker plants again, it's not pure. I can't give you the exact number for that because I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. Um, but the point being is that we have a problem. If we want to take these CO2 emissions and we want to store them in the ground, under the ground, something known as geo sequestration, which we'll get into in the next um, video, then we have an issue. Um, we don't want to have to run enormous compressors to compress this stream to very high pressures to inject it into the ground if only a quarter of it is CO2. We'd be expending huge amounts of money and electricity compressing what is mostly harmless nitrogen and argon. And so essentially the idea with carbon capture, if I was to draw a generic box here, carbon capture, and I don't particularly like the term, I actually prefer the term carbon purification or carbon separation. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking a, a dilute CO2 stream, like from a power station, um, and then we are separating out a, a high purity CO2 stream, and I'll call this the rest. So whatever was, was left here. And ideally, the typical rule of thumb that people have been using is you want to get this CO2 stream to the order of 90% pure. And so what that would effectively mean is that um, we've taken our dilute CO2 stream, this rest we can just put back to the atmosphere because it's mostly nitrogen and argon and it's harmless, and maybe some water as well. Um, and this CO2 stream, we can then send off for storage, which I'll talk about um, in the next With a Sharpie video. Now there's a critical element that you need to be aware of here because everything on carbon capture hinges on this. This separation, like every separation that we ever perform ever, so separations of mixtures of liquids, separations of mixtures of gases, it doesn't matter, they all require an input of energy. So we have to put energy into this carbon capture system, whatever it looks like, in order to make this separation of, of high purity CO2 to come out. If we don't put energy in, uh, the laws of thermodynamics say that it can't happen. And so that energy could be in the form of uh, electricity. Uh, for example, if you're running uh, gas compressors or something like that, or it could be in the form of heat. Um, and there's a few different technologies which I'll talk about in a later, um, a later session. So that in a nutshell is what carbon capture is about. We're, we've got a problem of this dilute CO2 stream that's produced by our industry. We want to put it into the ground uh, in a storage. And so we need what we call carbon capture to take that dilute CO2 stream and turn it into a high purity CO2 stream. And in the next talk, I'll talk to you a little bit more about how we might go about doing that. This has been David Kearns with another With a Sharpie video. You have a good day.